Hello and welcome to the first day of the online physical science course. Uh, I am Dr. James Sanders and I will be the instructor for this course, uh, this uh, term. And I've put together this short video that you're watching as a sort of introduction to the physical science course. Um, and I basically want to just go over a few basic things that uh, that are relevant to the course, namely what, what my course policies are going to be like, what the course is going to be uh, uh, covering, and so on. So this is a physical science course. Um, that means that it largely is going to consist of uh, material from the physical sciences. Go figure. Um, I, my own background is that I am actually a physicist, so I did a PhD in physics from the University of Texas, and um, so, so I'm going to focus mostly on the physics side of physical science, um, although I will also cover a few topics of interest to the chemistry side of the course. <clears throat> um, the course is going to be using this textbook by uh, Shipman and Wilson and Higgins and Torres. It's their Introduction to Physical Science, 14th edition, and we will largely be covering material from the first eight chapters and from chapter 11 uh, from this text. Uh, so uh, what what is this physical science course going to be all about? Well, um, it might be helpful to first ask the question, what is science to begin with? And uh, science itself comes from the Latin word scientia, which means knowledge. And uh, basically, when we refer to science uh, in the modern sense, we're referring to mostly knowledge about the material world or knowledge about the uh, the part of nature that you can interact with, that you can measure, that you can quantify, etc. And um, we're mostly interested in describing our environment and then understanding how uh, how our environment runs, if you will. And, and basically, we describe things because those descriptions can then lead to a better understanding, which then lets us look uh, a little more deeply into these things. Uh, we describe uh, the world with theory, then we confirm the theory via experimentation, basically observe the world, take data, what have you. And then from there we modify our theories some more. So. Uh, science itself can be broken into hard sciences or natural sciences and then soft sciences or social sciences. And um, the natural sciences or the hard sciences are what we're more interested in because uh, these they get their name hard because they're more uh, rigidly defined, if you will. So the hard sciences are uh, make a greater use of the scientific method, they make greater use of controlled experiments, uh, they tend to be very strongly imperiological, if you will. Um, and within these natural sciences you can make two broad uh, divisions. One is the physical sciences, the other is the biological sciences. And the biological sciences are basically anything about uh, living organisms, uh, be it plant, animal, or uh, bacterium, etc. And we're more concerned here with the physical sciences, hence this course being a physical science course. And so this means that we're interested in physics or chemistry or astronomy or meteorology or geology. And specifically in this course we're going to consider physics and chemistry. Um, Troy University offers also a uh, Earth and Space Sciences course which is under uh, 
basically meteorology and maybe in the future we will have an astronomy course so those are entirely separate courses and therefore we're not going to cover them in the physical sciences um, what we're most interested in in this particular course is physics and chemistry so physics is mostly concerned with matter and motion uh, local motion if you will chemistry is more concerned with uh, molecules atoms uh, how they interact uh, how do they form the the, the large structure of large-scale objects etc so that's an overview of what the course is going to look like. Uh, Topics-wise, what I plan to cover over, over the course of this semester, and if you read through the notes and read these chapters, what you'll be reading about is um, uh, a little bit about the scientific method, a little bit about how to measure things, uh, how do you do a measurement, how do you interpret a measurement, uh, what are the kinds of units and conversion factors that might go into that? So that's going to be our uh, what's labeled lecture one, and that's chapter one of your text. Then we're going to move from there into the basic theory of motion, uh, what might be called kinematics, the description of a motion. So that's going to be about speed, velocity, acceleration, etc. Uh, we might talk a little bit about projectile motion or motion on a circle to special types of motion and that's going to all be under lecture two and chapter two then we're going to look at Newton's laws for motion uh, basically Newton's force laws and then also at uh, forces in general Archimedes principle uh, momentum and that basically is going to be the third lecture or the third chapter <clears throat> then we're going to move from there into work and energy and uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, conservation of energy, sources of energy, etc. That's going to be the fourth lecture. After that we'll look at temperature and its measurement, um, maybe a little bit about the, the ideal gas law, etc. That's going to be the fifth lecture. Then we're going to do waves. So waves are really split into two uh, lectures. The first one is just general wave concepts, mechanical waves, Doppler shifts, sound, etc. Second one is going to be about light, a specific type of wave. Um, and then from there, the, those are lectures uh, uh, six and seven. Lecture eight is going to cover electrostatics and uh, magnetism. And then lecture nine is going to be about chemical compounds and formulas. So that's a, a sort of short list of the topics that I hope to cover this semester. And so that's what you're signing up to uh, hopefully learn quite a bit about by taking this course from me. Um, my general expectations for this online class is that I, I, for grading is that I plan to post one quiz per lecture or one quiz per chapter and these are going to come about one per week therefore and these will all be posted on Blackboard you'll get an hour for each one of these quizzes um, no no do-overs uh, as soon as you open the quiz to start it a timer should start and after 60 minutes it should automatically submit whatever work you have if you haven't already submitted it and you get a grade from that. My plan is to have nine of these quizzes worth 10% each and I'll drop the lowest. In addition you will have one uh, comprehensive to that point in time midterm which is going to be proctored. It can't be dropped and it's worth 20% of your grade. There's no other homework involved for this course, at least for the lecture part of this, uh, the, the lecture part of this course. Instead, you have these quizzes, and if you open your book 
at the end of each chapter, there's some practice problems that you can use. Um, so look through the, the, the problems and the questions at the end of each chapter, and you should do well on the quizzes then. Uh, the, the breakdown of the grades is that I'm basically expecting you to get an average of a B- minus for the course. Um, so I've set 85% as the threshold for an A, 75% threshold for a B, 65% for a C, 55% of it for a D, and anything under that you fail. <clears throat> so that pretty much covers it as far as the logistics side of things for this course. Um, of course, I've included my email address, my office phone number, all that stuff in the syllabus. Um, my preferred method of contact, honestly, is email. Um, the f calling me by phone is more for dire emergencies, and dire emergency had better be really dire. Um, although I'm more sympathetic to some emergencies during uh, like labs, that kind of thing, if you're having trouble understanding the instructions and you're taking my lab, that's, that's something different. Um, my, my general expectations then are that you should read all of the lecture notes, read the chapters assigned. Um, you can work through the practice problems at the end if you'd like to. Uh, you can watch these videos that I post if you'd like to. These are more optional. Uh, ho hopefully you enjoy them. Um, I also will be posting sets of worked examples with each lecture. So the best way to approach those is you might try working through the example on your own before looking at the solution that I post. So each lecture should have a example um, and then it'll have the answer and then you can look up the full solution for how to get that answer or you can not look it up uh, as, as needed. But you should at least try to get the answer that I got by working it on your own and then if you can't get there then look up the full solution. And I think that that's probably about covers it for a first day video. Um, I, I don't have anything to add on the logistics side of this course. Um, I hope that you enjoy this video. And, uh, if not this video, then at least all the other videos that are more on the course material. And I uh, hope that this is a good semester for you all. So thanks for watching, and so long.